Alright, I'm going to show you how to use the Matrix Eater. A piece of software I've been working on writing for Warcraft 3 that I have found to be quite useful. So an example of the type of things that you could make with it right, would be these right here. So I was just working on these this past weekend, made several of these, things like this, right? That I hardly did any MDL text-based editing at all. And I used to do lots and lots of it. So I would say sort of an advertisement for my program here. Some of this stuff is looking pretty neat. That I've put together all with my software and one or two little tidbits of MDL editing, but really not much at all. Alright. <coughs> so, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to assume that you already have several of these Warcraft editing programs. I like to use the War 3 file converter here made by Yobgulls. Now, Yobgulls is a little bit of an older one. you got to start it a couple times to make sure it doesn't crash. But, I really like it because it converts wow. using the Warcraft DLLs themselves. Which are wonderful because the actual Warcraft DLLs will preserve formatting from the original MDLs designed by Blizzard. It works better in the game, I would imagine. Alright, so... We also will assume that you have the Magos' War 3 model editor. Useful program there. And it's with that that we will begin. So, <coughs> today I'm going to be showing a new feature that I've added to the Matrix Eater, along with giving an example of how to use it. And in order to do that, uh, some people were asking me <coughs> to have the ability to take a World of Warcraft model and add animation to it when it had no prior existing bones. Now, I don't actually have any World of Warcraft models, but there was that model of Illidan that was in the extra section and is almost never used for anything. So I was thinking today a good test of my program would be to take Cinematic Illidan, this guy here, and to add to him animations. Now, I've never tried this myself, I don't know exactly how it's going to go, but I would imagine that is within the realm of capability of the software that I've been writing. So we're going to try it. Do dead cinematic Illidan victory, cinematic Illidan victory, cinematic. Right. So we're going to jump over here. We go do dad cinematic. I've already opened up the uh, expansion archive here. Uh, Illidan victory cinematic. Here we go. <clears throat> All right. We got Illidan here. Uh, looking pretty spiffy, and we're going to export that to a place where we can find it. So I'm going to jump to this folder for models that I've been working on with my program. We're going to make a new folder. Do Illidan animations. Or maybe just animating Illidan. Animating Illidan. Alright, here we go. We're going to save Illidan Victory Cinematic there. Now, as for how we're going to do this, right? My program is not really great at creating things. You can see this Illidan, you know, has a one stand animation, doesn't do much. Um, it's really good for taking something that already exists like this and making it better. That's what I do a lot of, is editing things that already exist. So, we're going to combine it with previously existing Warcraft models. I would say we could take this Illidan here and borrow his animations to plunk them on the higher quality cinematic Illidan. Or conceivably higher quality, I suppose that's debatable, but point of the test is to add animations to something. Although at the same time, maybe you could be a little more creative and say, what if we take uh, one of the uh, Eridar, say, and we put Eridar animations on Illidan, and then put wing animations on the Eridar animating Illidan. It's totally within the realm of possibility of the program. So if we jump in here, grab the Eridar Warlock, maybe we'll do that. We'll see. Uh, Eridar Warlock. And for wings, you know, you want to put cool wings on Illidan. Wing animations, right? I'd say wing animations. Maybe that would use Illidan himself. Um, other than that, I think probably set there. We got most of these models. You can see Warlock, Illidan, Illidan Victory Cinematic. So let's jump to our converter, and we're going to take these MDXs that we exported from the viewer program there. And we are going to convert our MDXs to MDLs so that we can edit them in my software. <coughs> and we want animating Illidan. Just got Eridar Warlock and 
Illidan Evil. And Illidan from the Victory Cinematic. There you go. Now, I'm going to assume for the purpose of this video that you've got uh, the latest version of my Matrix Eater software running on your computer. See here, I've just booted the uh, development top version that I will probably post after making this video. <coughs> so, as for that, you come in here, you open up, build in Victory Cinematic, and you can see we got we got a nice looking Illidan here. He's got two Geo sets, it looks like uh, the the wings and the rest of his body, and he's totally devoid of animation. So we come in here to pivot points. He's got the Object 01 pivot point, the one pivot point to which all of his mesh is attached. In other words, nothing in this model does anything. So we're going to go import. And we're going to import. Let's import an Aerodar Warlock. Let's see how this goes. So the program brings up this import dialog. Now this thing is incredibly important what you do in the options in this dialog. And they're also incredibly complicated. So let's see if I can explain them all. Uh, starting off here, you can see there are green and orange boxes. The green boxes represent the Illidan Victory cinematic model that we just looked at. He's got two meshes, the body and the wings. And you can see here it shows the name of the texture, the body texture and the wing texture. Now if, if say I wanted to import an Eridar texture onto Illidan and, and leave the rest of the data the same, you can change the texture for the particular set of model that you're looking at. But we want to use, in this case, the uh, original texture. We're just going to change animation. So we'll leave these values the same. This right here is all of the geometric data in the Eridar Warlock, the, the shape of the character. And f again, for us, we don't really want the shape of that, we want the animation. So we're going to leave all for the section. The, the leave all buttons up here are section based, right? So in animation, this is a leave all for animation. In Geoset, this is a leave all for Geoset. So animation, we absolutely want all of the animation. We want Illidan to be able to die, dissipate, attack, cast spells, walk, and stand. So we'll leave all of those the same. By default, they're all set to import, and if you really wanted to, you could come in here, say, and make make dissipate, you know, change its name to uh, decay or, or something like that. But we won't be doing that for this experiment just yet. Um, and then you have bones. This is all of the data that Illidan doesn't have. How the model moves, right? I would say, for the purpose of our experiment here, maybe we'll just leave it all in. And actually, as I'm looking at these bones, I'm seeing, you know, you get we've got hero glow on the Eridar. Let, let's import the Hero Glow right into Illidan. So we'll have an Illidan with Hero Glow. So we're going to take this one Geo set here, the Team Glow Geo set. So we'll have an Illidan with Hero Glow just to be more awesome. Alright, so as you can see, this is the Matrices tab. This is what we want to improve for Illidan. And we're going to use the new feature I recently added to the program, but we can't do that yet because the matrices in the import feature, it finds old existing ones. So in this case, the entirety of each of Illidan's geosets was attached to object one. And it lets you just change those associations. So if I put something here, right, say I were to take Illidan Victory Cinematic, remove it, and add on to here Eridar War Warlock Pelvis, right? This will mean that Illidan Victory Cinematic Geoset 2, all all um, vertices that previously moved relative to object one will now move to object geo pelvis. If I was to do this and complete the model, Illidan would move, but all of him would move together as sort of like a like a waving puppet. You know, he, he would he would none of his model would work right. It would just float around, all constrained to the one point. So we don't really want to do that. We won't be using this tab for animation. So we're just going to leave these on object one. But we did import all these bones, so they will be in the model. And then here, the hero glow you can leave the same. They're going to be attached to the bones that are being imported from the hero glow of the Eridar, and that's totally fine. And here we have the objects, the uh, things like particle emitters, special effects that appear in the model, sound emitters, uh, the clickability of the model, which I think... <clears throat> uh, I'm not entirely sure that Illidan had any collision shapes, which means that you wouldn't be able to click that model in-game. So we're going to go ahead and import these. They don't really hurt anything to have them in there. Uh, and you, you see here, these are the attachment points. If you were to use a trigger to attach something to the model, like left foot, right foot, weapon, hand right, hand left, uh, they get attached to these points. So we'll go ahead and import just all this stuff from the Eridar. 